Do you have continuity or association plan for your business? Has anyone shared the concept of sustainability with you? What about the need to protect the rights of minority shareholders? What are those ingredients germane to having effective meetings? For these and many more, tune in to Corporate Governance Platform every Thursday on MITV, your darling station, on DSTV 255 and UHF 43 at 4.30 p.m. Corporate Governance Platform is your best medium for informative and educative strategies for the practice of the corporate governance profession. Institute, Institute of, of Chartered Secretaries, Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Nigeria. ISAN, the, the Hub of, of Governance, governance professionals. professionals. Hello and thanks for joining Corporate Governance Platform. The program is proudly brought to you by the Institute of Shadow Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan, the hub of governance professionals. And in the next couple of minutes, we'll be having conversation on the role of executive directors as managers of corporate business. And of course, to lead in this conversation is a very distinguished member of Ixan, Mrs. Laide Adeyemo, ACIS. Mrs. Adeyemo is a legal practitioner of over 26 years a charter secretary and an administrator. She is an intellectual property expert and provides intellectual property services to both local and international businesses. She is the managing director of JCS Client Services Limited, where she oversees the process of governance, compliance, and business support to businesses. Her area of expertise also spans across giving support to NGOs, private and public sector funded entities. She assists in creating, structuring, and supporting businesses and organizations with the aim of achieving commercial, ethical, and sustainable objectives. Mrs. Adiemo has varied and practical experience in providing support and structure to business across Nigeria in the area of compliance, corporate governance, and best practices. She is the chairman of editorial committee of the Institute of Charter Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan, Lagos Chapter where she produces the flagship magazine. Mrs. Sadi Emo, it's a pleasure having you on Corporate Governance Platform. Thank you very much. My pleasure being here. OK. We are going to be discussing the role of executive directors as managers of corporate business. Yes. Sir. And I'd like to kick start this conversation by asking you, who are the executive directors of corporate entities? OK. Thank you very much once again. And thank you to our viewers. Um, directors, board of directors are people who have been set to provide strategy for any organization whatsoever. Okay. So executive directors is a director who is a member of management and who has been so appointed, you know, to see to the day-to-day -day running of any organization. Okay, they see to the day-to-day -day running of the organization. Yes, yes. they direct, they manage um, the law, um, Company and Allied Matters Act. Section 269, um, subsection 1, I mean, provides that directors, the direct and the manage the day-to-day -day affairs of every organization. Okay, before I ask the next question, I'd like to invite our viewers to be part of this uh, particular uh, conversation. And to be part of this, you can ask questions or make comments via text message. If you want to ask questions, please send your text message to 80 Two three two three one two eight seven. I take the number again: zero eight zero two three two three one two eight seven. You have the number on the uh, on the uh, on your uh, television set. And please, when you ask your question, please put your name on it. Only text message. Please, no phone calls. Okay, Mr. Diemo, you said the executive directors engage into in the day-to-day -day running of the business yes please. now what distinguishes the executive director from the non-executive directors okay so um directors generally whether executive or non-executive they have um the responsibility of utmost good faith to any organization that they have been appointed okay. however the distinction between the executive director and the non-executive director is the fact that the executive director is an employee of the organization mm. non-executive directors are not employees the executive director has a contract of employment non-executive directors are appointed externally the executive director is a member of management and non-executive directors are not member of management although 
both of them, both executive and non-executive, are members of the board of directors, but there are clear distinctions regarding their responsibilities for any organization. Okay, can we talk about the independence of executive directors the same way we talk about the independence of the non-executive directors? Unfortunately, no. Because executive direct, the reason why we have independent executive directors is because of their high level of objectivity that they bring to the board and um, their experience, their expertise, their exposure. But the executive director is not that independent. The executive director is somebody who sees to the execution, like the word says, executive. They execute whatever strategy and whatever it is that has been um, put together by the board, they see to it that it is executed in the day-to-day -day running. They support the managing director, so they are not independent. It's required of them to provide with their knowledge and also with their background and um, what they have been exposed to, maybe their training, they're supposed to bring that fact to bear in the day-to-day -day working of the organization. You, you, you mentioned the fact that independence relates to being objective. Yes, please. Objectivity of the director. Yes, please. Can't the executive director still be objective, which will make the executive director to be independent? So, um, the obse it's very difficult for the uh, executive director to be objective in the sense that um, they are not able to, or rather they might not be able to have that power to challenge management because they are part of management. So okay. that's where their own, it's a little, um, a, a, a kind of little difficulty for them because they are the ones making, you know, the day-to-day the, the, the -day decisions with respect to the performance and growth of the organization. So they rather, there's, there's a bit of subjectivity, the balance of scale still stores subjectivity to the executive directors than the um, um, independent, non-executive directors because they have the right the power to challenge management decision okay. you know and it brings transparency it brings accountability and it makes the management itself to be accountable to the board okay yes fantastic the nigerian code of corporate governance actually specified that the non the executive directors yes she have a broad understanding of the business yes sure. and she have such other qualifications as that may assist in the performance of the duties and assignments given to the executive directors. Why yes. do you think the code is, uh, do you think this is important? Um, the, re the, the reason for that provision of the code is because with their background knowledge and the understanding of the organization, that is the only way that they will be able to provide effectiveness in the execution of corporate governance. Because corporate governance is very key to any organization, you know, because it, it, uh, uh, it um, ensures that there are ethics, you know, in the way that the organization is run, run is, it, it ensures that there is transparency and objectivity. So apart from the qualification that any executive director may have, the executive director also must have a robust understanding of how the organization works because that is the only way that will help in the decision making with respect to the growth and performance of the organization. Without the understanding, without the robust understanding of what an organization does, it will be pretty difficult for the executive director to be able to prefer you know, or to be able to come up with good decisions that can strengthen and ensure the growth of the organization. So they must have this broad understanding of the business so that they're able to contribute value to the business. Exactly. Still on the code of corporate governance, yes. the NCCG code of 2018. Yes. The code provides that an executive director can also take up an appointment as non-executive director in another company as long as that appointment is not detrimental to the organization where he is the executive director why do you think the code allows that okay that's very that that's very good so he's an executive director in company a yes but he's a non-executive director in, in company, company b. b as a non-executive director in company b he's going to also be objective because he's not going to be involved in the day-to-day -day running of company b it also allows for collaboration 
Okay. It allows for knowledge sharing. It allows also for him to be able to understand also how he can learn, how his own organization can also be run with respect to corporate strategies. You know, it, it, it allows for, um, if you call it interpair kind of, you know, decision making and also engagement because he will also meet with other directors at that company. And the key word you have said is the fact that it must not be detrimental and it must not be at the risk of his employment at company A, where he is executive director. So he must declare to the board and it must also be that the board will look at it if it is in line with its policy, then they can allow him to have that kind of appointment. My thinking is conflict of interest. Even though it is not detrimental as what we can see, don't you think there could be conflict of interest so um that is why it will be subjected to the policy of the organization for the board to see and once the board is able to identify that there are no conflicts of interest and he is able to provide knowledge you know and bring in new understanding bringing innovation bringing you know other things that the board or the management of his company can also learn from then that's that that's fine however where there are conflicts of interest he has to declare okay and once he declares once there's a declaration because even the corporate uh, corporate allied and matters act provides for companies to declare i mean there, there's, there's a provision with respect to conflict of interest so he has to declare that for transparency and for him to be accountable to the board how often does the executive director declares oh annually annually periodically yes for every engagement and for any um appointment whatsoever that he has that is you know um that might be detrimental or it is for him to declare so that the board actually evaluates okay. based on its own policy to be sure whether it's going to be of in the interest of the company or it's going to be at okay at does he need to declare because he's taking up another appointment as an executive director or it is statutory for every executive director on an annual basis to do this declaration. It's statutory and it also needs to declare whatever directorship that he is taking up okay. in other places. Okay, let's also go back to the Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance. I, I have seen the code to be the, the only book of corporate, corporate governance, governance in Nigeria. Yes, now, it's key. What is the rationale behind the uh, provisions that deny the executive directors from being a member of some certain committees, for instance, certain committees of the board, remuneration committee, audit committee, nomination and governance committees of the board. Why are they restricted from becoming a member of those committees? Okay. I said something um, earlier when I was uh, distinguishing between an executive director and a non-executive director. The key is the high objectivity, the high degree of objectivity that a non-executive director brings to the board. An executive director would not be able to challenge management and committees are set up to assist the board. For example, audit committee, if I am an executive director, a finance director, and I am put in the audit committee, there is no transparency, there is no objectivity. I will not be able to prefer the necessary accountability that is required of me. So non-executive directors are the best members of committees because committees support the board in their responsibilities and in the running of every organization committees when we have committees that are uh, full of non-executive directors they will be able to hold the management team accountable you know and there will be transparency and there will be objectivity and that kind of company would be able to grow. The, the, the non-executive directors, are, at times, they are more or less like checks and balances, you know, on the um, management itself and call them to question, ask them, you know, questions, and they're supposed to objectively analyze such questions so that it can help the organization. Yeah, I have a question here from somebody. Yes. Though the person didn't put his name. The question is that, can executive director become a chairman of the board and if not why 
That's the question. <laughs> um, an executive director cannot go from management to become a chairman of the board. And even if he could, there's supposed to be a cool off, the law says cool off period, a cool off period of like minimum of three years before he can, you know, because um, if he goes right from executive director to the chairman, the the whole essence of corporate governance is about objectivity, is about accountability, is about fairness, is about transparency. So he cannot move from being executive straight on to being chairman. There has to be a cool off period where you know things are put in place, and uh, you know before he can aspire to say he wants to be chairman. Okay, there has to be a cool off period for executive directors to leave the position before he can aspire to become. The chairman of the board. If you are just joining us, is Corporate Governance Platform, and we are transmitting live from MITV Lagos. We are discussing or having a conversation on the role of executive directors as managers of corporate business. And Mrs. Lide Adeyemo, ACIS, has been doing justice to that conversation. You can also be part of the conversation, just like the last person that sent a text message by sending a message to us via SMS to ask questions or to make comment on the conversation, role of executive directors as managers of corporate business. So back to Mrs. Adeyemo, yes, I, I, I quite understand the fact that as an executive director, being on that board, you cannot become the chairman. No. So who are the people that can become the chairman? Is it, so can MD become the chairman? Even the MD two has a could there must be a cool so off period. The chairman. So chairmen normally are I mean people who are appointed as chairmen are normally are people who are non executive directors or independent non executive directors. Look, so they are appointed. Non directors yes, can also become a yes, they are appointed externally. They're not you know it's not within the, the the organization. Okay, why do you think the let's go back to the Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance? Okay. Why do you think the code recommends? that the responsibilities and the authorities of executive directors should be clearly spelled out from the contract of employment. So um, when it is spelled out in their contract of employment, it helps them to function within the scope that they have been appointed. It helps them not to go, you know, it, 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 it brings a kind of legal protection, both for the executive director and the company itself. It helps the executive director not to act ultra-virus of whatever responsibility that has been given to him, you know, and it puts it in perspective. It becomes a book of reference. The contract of employment becomes a book of re reference for both the organization and the executive director. It also helps the executive director to know what benefits, you know, accrues to him, whether it's holiday, whether it's his pension and things like that. So, this also would help with respect to corporate governance because the executive director as a director cannot wake up tomorrow and decide to say, oh, this is entitled to me or this is due to me, you know, we will go back to his contract of employment to see and make reference to it, whether actually what he is asking for is what is due to him. So that it's not, um, the company is not run haphazardly. The company is not run just anyhow, you know, that maybe when there's any money, then we want to declare windfall. Am I entitled to it as an executive director or I am not? The letter of employment will tell us what it is. It becomes a book of reference. So when companies, when directors do that, what do we call it? When it is not part of the contract of employment and there is a windfall, something to be shared that is some, one of the things that um, the authorities the regulators that's one of the things that they can take the company on that they are not operating the tenants of good corporate governance beautiful because uh, 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 at the end uh, of the day it will eat to the bottom line of that organization and it will affect the organization okay i'm happy that there is a regulator somewhere that is yes. also um, uh, checking to see whether those the company is complying with the tenants of corporate governance oh, there is okay what are the disadvantages if executive directors are being micromanaged by the board we had like um executive directors are members of management i said earlier and with members of management their responsibility is to see to the day-to-day -day running of the organization 
the board provides strategic direction. So where executive directors are being micromanaged by the board, it hinders them from taking effective decisions to issues that happen because then they have to, at every point in time before they take their decisions, go back to the board or something. It hinders motivation. It also hinders them from taking the best decisions with respect to issues that happen regarding the organization. So there, there should be the free hand for them to be able to act and direct and manage you know, the performance and growth of the organization. However, they must know, that is the executive directors and the management, they must know that they owe um, responsibility to the board and they are accountable to the board. But there must be no micromanaging. Micromanaging stifles the running and good performance of any organization. And it will affect how the organization is seen, you know, in the in the environment or what or, or what the organization comes up comes up with with respect to its decisions, with respect to its growth, or with respect to how it also relates to other organizations in the environment. So what are the best ways to avoid this? So the best way to avoid this is for the board of directors to give independence to the management. And then that is also why um, it is, it is um, encouraged that board meetings are held periodically. Okay. Actually, maybe on the minimum of quarterly, so that management reports to the board. Board is also able to oversight, provide their oversight functions and be able to guide the board in the right path that they should go. Let's come back to Ixan a little bit. Okay. Does Ixan curriculum grooms members or potential members for the role of executive directorship? Oh yes, Ixan, Ixan syllabus is very robust and Ixan um, syllabus provides courses that groom people and groom their members even to become directors you know um syllabuses that talks about risk management syllabuses that talks about corporate governance syllabuses that talks about i mean the examination the exam examination just finished yesterday you know and we have a whole lot of um, um courses a whole lot of people that partook in that examination syllabuses that talk about public finance you know risk management and all of that so exam syllabus is very very robust and i want to encourage anybody even if you are not um, um if, if you are not um aspiring or if you have been in that path of directorship exam also still has webinars and also hold you know um, discussions from time to time with respect to what the responsibilities of directors are good you are the chairman editorial committee uh lagos state chapter of vixen yes please. now i want to also ask does it some different publications not 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 just the flagship uh, magazine yes. that you that you are the chairman of the editorial committee does Ixan publications, general publications, also assist members to play their role well or effectively as executive directors? Yes. I mean, from time to time, Ixan has periodical um, journals that they issue. They also have um, um, flagship, you said. Apart from flagship, flagship is uh, for legal state chapter of Ixan. There's also the, you know, the um, general national body magazines as well so from time to time you do have publications that people can leverage on to learn because in all of these magazines and and journals and periodicals you get articles that will tell you the requirements and the things that um, you need to know you know and provide your knowledge okay what advice do you have for executive directors out there on how to uphold the tenets of corporate governance you have said corporate governance is very essential so what advice do you have for them Corporate governance is very essential and corporate governance sits on these four key tenets of fairness, accountability, responsibility and transparency. Now, my advice for executive directors is going to be one, um, you must be aware that there are potential, um, potential liabilities as an executive director and these liabilities 
they are civil and they are criminal and they are also um, personal and they are joint so you just have to be aware of this so that you will ensure that in any scene and any decision that you make you have to uphold the tenets of corporate governance that's one two my second advice for um executive directors is for them to be aware of the provisions of the law of what the law says with respect to corporate governance company and allied matters act is the number one law on corporate governance nigeria code of corporate governance is also another one and you must also be aware of the guidelines of corporate governance in whatever sector where you are playing whether it's in pension you look at the pencom the cbn act the sec you know all of this nicom whether it's insurance whatever sector where you're playing there are guidelines for corporate governance so you must ensure that you uphold the tenets of corporate governance as stated in all of these guidelines my number three advice also is that directors should ensure except directors should encourage and ensure that there are committees when there are committees the um, responsibilities and requirements of what the company is supposed to do it becomes easier because these committees will be able to provide you know um, understanding and will be able to provide also instruction with respect to what and what the organization is supposed to do above all executive directors also my advice my final advice is for them to instill um, framework for risk management in their organization so that when there is any issue you are able to get hold of it, nip it in the board, and ensure that there is a um, solution on time. Thank you very much, Mrs. Lady Adiem or ACRS. That is the much that we can take because of time constraints. We thank you for coming on the show and for thank sharing you your so thoughts much. on the role of executive directors. We thank our viewers for being part of the show and the production crew. Thank you for being part of today's episode. I will leave you with a quote from one of the co-founders of Microsoft, Bill Gates. And he said, as we look ahead into the next century, leaders will be those who empower others. I'm Dr. Tunde Odeyemi. Bye for now. Do you have continuity or association plan for your business? Has anyone shared the concept of sustainability with you? What about the need to protect the rights of minority shareholders? What are those ingredients germane to having effective meetings? For these and many more, tune into a corporate governance platform every Thursday on MITV, your darling station, on DSTV 255 and UHF 43 at 4.30 p.m. Corporate governance platform is your best medium for informative and educative strategies for the practice of the corporate governance profile.